And we are moving to the next uh, lecture by a speaker from the Weizmann Institute, Dr. Sergei Semenov. And Sergei will tell us about tiolate based autocatalytic reaction networks. Sergei, please. So today's talk will be about uh, uh, reaction networks and their potential role in uh, origin of life. But uh, before we go to the chemistry of these networks, uh, let's watch uh, two small videos. So in the first video, this one, uh, you can see the color waves on the skin of the cuttlefish. In the second video, you will see the chemical waves, actually in synthetic reaction network, which is uh, developed uh, in uh, my group. Uh, the visual similarity uh, between uh, these two videos already gives us a hint uh, that uh, uh, reaction networks play a role in uh, life and uh, could be instrumental uh, for its origin. This idea becomes even more clear if we uh, look into cell as a chemical reactor. Uh, so we look into the molecular level uh, because uh, uh, chemical cell is very different from uh, chemical flask which you used to do experiments. Uh, many reactions go here simultaneously, but not independently. They are interconnected into the extremely complex reaction network. To just get a rough idea about the complexity of such network, here you can see the piece, actually a small piece of the metabol metabolic network of E. coli. But luckily this network consists of uh, uh, functional motifs uh, such as bistable switches or stellatory uh, motifs. And these motifs essentially consist of the uh, most simple building blocks, such as uh, one reaction uh, suppressing another reaction, one reaction accelerating another reaction. And if this acceleration or suppression comes back to reaction itself, then we can talk about positive and negative feedback loops, which are the key ideas to work with the reaction networks. And the positive feedback loop which essentially is autocatalysis, is especially interesting because it can be uh, instrumental for three seemingly different very related uh, issues, but all of which are related to origin of life. So first of all, most known is uh, that uh, autocatalysis is the key for uh, Darwinian evolution since it allows the most efficient replicator to quickly rise its uh, population. Uh, the second one is that uh, actually autolytic reactions could be uh, critical for localization of reactions in some way to compartmentalization because if autocatalyst is located in one place then reaction will go in this place while it will not go around. And the last is that uh, autocatalysis being a positive feedback uh, is uh, often source of chemical instabilities which uh, um, uh, the source of uh, uh, spatial and temporal organization, such as uh, oscillations and patterns. But there is important uh, detail about uh, all these functions in, con in connection, actually in some connection to the previous speaker, uh, in connection to the molecular complexity which requires to uh, get there. Uh, first what I want to point is that Darwinian evolution requires the specific recognition, actually very efficient recognition, considering the error threshold problem. And this molecular recognition, the specificity of autocatalysis requires high level of molecular complexity, often beyond actually denucleotide. Uh, uh, while uh, uh, the problem with uh, the, the localization of reaction essentially is uh, uh, not, doesn't require the specific autocatalysis. Uh, autocatalysis, autolytic networks with very simple molecules can do it, uh, but it desirably should be, this autocatalysis should be in connection to compartmentalization. So essentially, uh, the, here I would like to focus on the type of the systems where autocatalysis is in some way uh, coupled to the compartmentalization. Uh, and, um, uh, we have to look actually to, since uh, as I told this, it doesn't require the specific uh, recognition, molecules can be quite simple, but uh, what kind of molecules uh, we should start with? I mean, usually, uh, the, I mean, we, we think that that should be simple, but the, I uh, derive the five uh, main uh, criteria, which uh, I think are useful to select molecules for the autocatalytic systems. 
I mean, uh, autocatalysis is out of equilibrium phenomena, so the molecules should have um, uh, high potential energy, so the, the driving, thermodynamic driving force uh, uh, should be high for these molecules to react. At the same time, they should be able to form, uh, to provide many reaction pathways and to give many molecules that's related to the evolution, to build to produce many species, and at the same time also to the possibility to have uh, autolytic pathways. Quite in connection with first, we want molecules to have high energy to be able to react, but we don't want them to react without uh, control of catalysis. Uh, and two other issues is that, uh, of course, we want m sort of molecules which at least have right composition to the form biomolecules and molecules which are found in space. That brings me to the uh, sort of uh, my selection of the molecules to work with. Uh, I would focus on uh, mostly on the two aspects, uh, two, two classes. One is the nitriles, which are good building blocks for many, uh, for, for peptides or for uh, nuclear bases. Even actually. Uh, and second type of second class is uh, uh, the sulfur containing molecules for the reason that actually triolate, which is often formed from the sulfur compounds, is uh, uh, one of the strongest nuclear fires which you can get from the sort of common chemistry or biochemistry. Uh, so, uh, based on this selection, I would, uh, with ideas, I would like to tell you uh, two stories. The first one is uh, about uh, uh, autocatalysis with thiuronium cells. So there are a few reasons why we uh, get uh, into the uh, story about thyronium salts. Uh, first of all, they are actually quite easily formed from uh, the classical prebiotic molecules such as uh, cyanamide, uh, just by reacting with the thyronium. And um, uh, at the same time, thyronium salts, which is this example is thyronium salt, uh, they are reassembled in some way to esters in the sense that it's uh, sulfur connected to the carbon type of carbon uh, yield. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, well, as you saw already from previous lectures, uh, diesters are very nice because they can uh, undergo native chemical ligation, uh, which is essence is that uh, there's a first exchange with, uh, it should be also fast, uh, exchange with uh, of tiles and then the, the quicker arrangement into the um, a mind. So we saw that maybe analogous reaction can happen with thyronium salts. And uh, yeah, if I tell about it, it uh, definitely does. So um, uh, then uh, here you see that uh, if we react to the uh, typical thyronium salt, uh, in this case, uh, it is uh, uh, the thyronium salt derived from the, uh, the mass tile uh, with uh, two compounds, one is uh, amino ethanol and another one is uh, cysteamine, which are different, as one has OH and another one has CH. Uh, amino ethanol shows almost no reaction in two hours, while the reaction for cysteamine is complete in about half an hour. So that immediately actually leads us to the uh, idea that uh, uh, since we were able to make autocatalytic systems with star esters, we should be able to make it from the thyronium salts. Uh, and for this, we need to start from the disulfides. Uh, uh, if we start from disulfide, the amine of the disulfide in water and pH around neutral uh, would not quickly react with the thyronium salt. Uh, while uh, because re tile released in the system can reduce the sulfide, reaction should proceed autocatalytically, and uh, uh, that uh, indeed what it does. Uh, it uh, you can see here very uh, clearly visible sigmoidal curve, which is uh, the typical uh, for autocatalysis. And to better understand mechanism, uh, one can uh, look into this reaction as a sort of nucleophilic chain reaction. So when the uh, cysteamine uh, reacts with, uh, let's say you mix these comp components and there is a little bit of cysteamine in it. So then uh, uh, cysteamine, there's a little bit of cysteamine can react with, uh, through sort of analogy of native chemical ligation, the styrenium salt, producing two tiles, each of which can uh, exchange with uh, starting disulfide through the tile disulfide exchange. And so we have uh, two molecules of cysteamine from one molecule of cysteamine. And uh, here, 
I would like to point out that uh, by the variant tile, we can actually control reactivity. So by using actually tile, uh, acetyl tile haline, uh, uh, so tile haline actually, not acetyl tile, it's a tile haline, uh, as a tile for tile uranium salt, we can get system which reacts very fast, which is important for some of the questions we work with. So the tile uranium salts, uh, are different from tyresters from several perspectives, but I would highlight here two. Uh, one is that they are actually the building blocks for the uh, heterocycles, including analogs of nucleobases, and they can hold positive charge. Well, not actually tell you how you guanidines, which are formed from them. So guanidines, I actually didn't mention that it's from guanidines, so you're from guanidines here. Uh, the guanidines are building blocks for heterocycles, and guanidines also can hold positive charge very, uh, within a very broad range of uh, pH. So uh, to illustrate the first question, uh, issue, first uh, quality of guanidines is formation of heterocycles, we synthesize such uh, molecules as disulfide that contains both disulfide and nitrile, which, which I mentioned also during the selection of the molecules. So what happens? First, you get the, the expected autocatalytic process and producing of the gonadine. But then the cascade process uh, of cyclization of this gonadine uh, gives you analog uh, of uh, uh, uracil, essentially. And, but it, it's, it's a bit stretched to say it's an analog for it, so it's a dehydro uh, derivative, but it's a it's pyrimidine derivative. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, to illustrate the second point about uh, uh, the connection, uh, the ability to hold the charge, and the second point is also very mu much more in the connection to the, the question of the coupling of autocatalysis to compartmentalization, we designed the following molecule. We designed the disulfide that contains uh, uh, a mine, uh, sort of uh, four mines, and you can see the structure. Uh, the trick, of course, that uh, uh, this um, native chemical ligation type process uh, would be assisted, uh, uh, tiles will assist uh, formation of guanidines if it's in separated by two CH2 groups, but also if it's separated by three CH2 groups. So both of them would be guanidinated. Uh, so one of the products of process which should be autocatalytic should be this uh, uh, disulfide, which contains uh, four guanidines, so it's polycation, and this polycation uh, should be uh, should interact with polyanions such as acrylic acid, polyacrylic acid, of course, polyacrylic acid, and uh, form uh, uh, polyelectrolyte complexes, which are well known to form complex coservates and phase separate. So um, uh, we did it, that, and here you will see a video of uh, what is happening when you mix uh, these components uh, under the microscope. It's a preliminary result, so it's not the, the greatest <laughs> video yet. We will work on it to get it better. But um, uh, you can see that after some delay, uh, we get uh, the drops, we get space separation, we get carcerate drops out of the system. Uh, we can semi-quantify it by analyzing the number of uh, drops in image G um, uh, which formed. And um, uh, you can uh, see that after some delay, we get formation of the uh, quick formation of the drops. And then because of coalescence, a bit of the decrease of the numbers, not the total amount of the separated phase. Uh, so, that actually, the moment, makes the end of the first story, and we go to the second story, which, where we went to even the more to the classical, classical prebiotic molecule. And, uh, go, this tyrium salts are a bit exotic. This it's a lot of intervention from our side, uh, while the HCN is uh, about the most classical one. So, uh, and um, in this uh, project, we actually started from just uh, looking how some model tile as Mercaptite and would react with HCN. Uh, and uh, uh, we actually observed that when you just mix one molar HCN solution with one molar uh, Mercaptite ethanol solution in D2O, uh, you get uh, um, sort of reaction happen quickly after delay. So it has some sort of sigmoidal curve shown here. It's typical for autocatalysis, yet it can be, delay could be caused by many other mechanisms. 
So what we did, we ran this reaction in hydrogen. We filled the tube with the with hydrogen. Sergey, okay. five minutes left. Okay, I, I, but I have to leave two minutes, as I remember. For, uh, Fine, okay. <laughs> the more uh, you leave, the more questions we do. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Okay, so... Um, uh, that uh, uh, we started this, uh, initiated this reaction by the grain of potassium cyanide. And you can see here clearly that reaction front moves with a constant speed. And reaction front moving with a constant speed is uh, a very strong proof of uh, autocatalysis. Uh, then, um, uh, actually, uh, the more interesting even was the chemical composition for what we got. So uh, we got, of course, this colored compound, which is, contains uh, uh, diamine malleon nitrile. But also we got uh, some powder, uh, which was quite hard to identify, but my PhD student Alexander, he managed to uh, react it with uh, benzyl chloride and get crystal structure of the product. It showed us that this is actually the uh, polysulfide chains that are forming there. And um, is a mass, we can see that uh, uh, there are various of the polysulfide chains. And what is interesting about the system, and again, connection to the coupling of the autocatalysis of compartmentalization, that we from two absolutely hydrophilic uh, water mixable molecules, we actually get in hydrophilic chains. Uh, they, I mean, the, the, some primitive simulation, dynamic shows that they will sort of form a micellar type of structures. But more interesting, if we do it in layered system, this reaction, we can see actually, well, first of all, you see that it forms precipitation pattern, which is not directly related to the, what I'm discussing. But you also see that it forms the aggregates, some sort of aggregates, this, uh, this molecules immediately form. So they, they are hydrophobic. Uh, so we uh, decided to look to the similar molecule, to the, it's this TMI, and uh, here I would like to show you a video that you get an idea why we also consider it quite interesting. So you see that uh, reaction again has delay, but then there happens liquid-liquid uh, phase separation very quickly. And we uh, were able to extract uh, something from this uh, from these drops, which had reasonable NMR spectra, but we were not able to identify from NMR. But again, the same trick worked. So the extraction and reaction with uh, benzyl chloride gave us crystals. And crystals uh, showed us that we are getting actually quite unexpected structure. And uh, that means that what we get here is such tricyclic uh, molecule. And uh, what is interesting about this molecule is actually shows that when you copolymerize HCN with something, uh, you, the, the, for example, in this case, this TMI acts as a capping reagent and stopping process, let's say, on the three uh, carbons, or three carbons here in incorporated from HCN. Uh, so I think my time is going to the end, so I will quickly show this video, which just shows that various of the tiles show this effect. So actually, we think that autocatalysis uh, and this shows this kinetic effect. So we think the autocatalysis is coming actually from the uh, oligomerization of HCN producing some basic amines, which uh, uh, say increase pH of the system and that increase concentration of tiolate and tiolate and quick attacks HCN. Uh, so that is uh, the, our hypothesis about the overall the mechanism of autocatalysis. And um, yeah, with that, I would like to uh, take two messages from this. Uh, uh, from this talk. First one, it's actually probably interesting to look into the systems uh, where autocatalysis happens in some compartment, uh, or it, it better even if it generates the material of the, the compartment, and uh, so that uh, reaction would be, uh, autocatalysis will sort of ensure localization of stuff here, and maybe difference in diffusion will create some sort of selection. And uh, it's interesting to look into the copolymerization of HCN, especially in context of forming uh, uh, the hydrophobic uh, building blocks. So with that, uh, I would like to, uh, first of all, thank my group, especially the Origin of Life Plan group, Alexander, who did most of this work, and uh, um, Anton, Vika, Peter, Salming, uh, and uh, all of you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sergei. Uh, the, the chemistry was very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, if people have questions, please uh, feel free to contact Sergei by email or any other means.